Bless the name of the Lord. Whenever you see that word IS, very positively speaking, is a strong tower. And the righteous run in and are saved. The righteous know where to run. Others run around with, like a chicken with their head cut off. But the righteous know where that help is. As David said, my help coming from the Lord which made heaven and earth. Let's bow our heads in a word of prayer. Most gracious and heavenly Father, we do come before thee. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, we pray, and for his sake, we thank you for your love, your tender mercy, your kindness, for the joy in knowing that thou art God, and beside thee there is none other. You're the great I am. You're the God of all flesh. And beside thee there is none other. You so loved us that you gave unto us thine only begotten Son, he so loved us that on that cruel cross of Calvary, he bled and died. Father, you did not suffer him to see corruption, but on the third day, he arose, giving us hope beyond the grave. Father, we pray that you will Bless us and strengthen us. Feed us with the wisdom, the knowledge, and the understanding. Enrich our souls that we might be worthy of thee. As we move throughout the workplace, on the highways, the byways, in and out of the stores, where will we go? May the light of Christ in us shine that the world might see that there is a difference and a child of God and a child of the devil. Father, remember those that are sick and afflicted in their bodies from the crown of their head right on down to the sole of their feet, whatever it is. We know that you're able. You made us. You created us. You formed into our the breath of life and we became living souls. And for all of this, we say thank you. Remember those in the hospitals, the convalescent homes, the jail houses. Remember those on the battlefield fighting for the freedom of others. Remember your people, Israel, dear Lord, as they are battling this old enemy. And Father, sometimes when we fail to do what we are commanded to do, we have to suffer. So we pray, dear Lord, that you will bless them and strengthen them in their fight against evil, that they may come forth victoriously. In all the world that seems to be gathered against them, that you will Introduce unto them the power of the Almighty God, that they may learn not to speak against, but to be a supporter of God Almighty. So, Father, we thank you. Be with us all, protect us all, lead God and keep us all, and feed us now with the words of wisdom. Grant unto us a little more grace that we run this race and then lead us all on to glory each and every step of the way. This is our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ we do pray and for his sake, remembering all that we have not and cannot call by name who need and stand in need of your blessing. And the mothers who are the mother of all living, as Adam called Eve, the mother of all living. 
So help us to see, know, and understand the importance of being mothers. In Jesus' name, we do pray, and for his sake, we thank you. Together can we all say, amen. amen. Give an honor to God today and to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to the ministers of the gospel, to the digging, the congregation, those that are tuning in today. We say good afternoon, and may God bless you. For truly, God is good, and his mercy endure to all, not some, but all generations. Thank God for the scroll which reads obedience, love, reverence, and respect, first being to God, then to leadership, then to one another. Thank God for salvation being free. For the man and the woman of God, the life of Solomon is showing his companion. <clears throat> Thank God for my parents that heard the word, hid it into their hearts, and then taught it to the family and I, we all were brought up under the same teachings. Some have chosen to go in a different direction, but my feet stand in an even place. And in this congregation do I bless the Lord. Thank God for the sparks from the anvil on page three of your programs today. This is the 12th day of May couple more days and maybe half gone. Just got here and getting ready to cross the threshold and start on the downside. But the first one says the cook in the kitchen is as important in her place as the president in the White House. Amen. The cook in the kitchen. Wives and mothers Spend a lot of time in the kitchen, especially when they got 12 miles to feed. But John, y'all had 10, we had 12. Stay in the kitchen. And that's her place. And she is just as important in the kitchen as the president is in the White House. The second says, any person who has responsibility needs help. God knew the plan that he had for Adam, so he brought forth a help meet that he may be aided in the things in which was before him. Wives are advisors, amen, in more ways than one. They not only bear the children, but they have to raise them. So those in responsibility need help. The third says, if you want a better world, woman, women, take time and make better men. The Lord says, train up a child in the way it should go. Not the way it wants to go, but it should go. And I think of my mother and how that she trained us. Went off to military, three W's you stay away from. Women, weed, and whiskey. Three W's. Beware. And I thank God. That was good advice. Even though in the military you see a lot of women, you see a lot of weed, you see a lot of whiskey. But thank God. Never took a drag. Never took a drip. A sip. And I stayed away from women. Amen. Thank God for knowing only one woman. 53 years. 
Amen. Isn't that wonderful? So if you want a better world, mothers, if you want a better world, then take time, take time, and make better men. You train them. The fourth says, words spoken out of season causes a fuss out of reason. Sometimes people open their mouths and it's just not the right thing to do at that particular time. And because they say so, there's a fuss. So we thank God for his right words, words of comfort, words of joy. See, words are spirit. And when you say certain things, you can cause an uprise. And you can say certain things and cause things to calm down. Words of spirit. The devil will get in somebody, get them all stirred up. Then he'll jump out of that person and get in the other person and stir that person up and pretty soon they at odds one with the other, and he said, no, they're laughing at him. And he was the one that started it. So be careful with your words, amen? Especially those out of season. They will cause a fuss. On the back of your program, as we give honor to the mothers today, let us each understand the purpose for which God said, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make him and help me for him. After he created all the animals and took them to Adam and Adam named them, but there was not one for Adam. So listen, therefore from the rib of Adam, the woman was created to be and is the mother of all living. Every individual today that is in the building stemmed from Eve. She's the mother of all living. So give we thanks today for God's gift to man, all for the benefit of his holy plan, multiplication. Amen. And on the front of your program, it says integrity is the virtue of a loving mother. Amen, integrity, how she operates. With dignity and love and understanding, it's a virtue. It's what's necessarily needed. And at all, because not all mothers are loving. I was reading where this one woman shot her child and turned around and shot herself. Where's the love? She may be a woman, but she wasn't a mother. A mother cares for, nourishes, cherishes, and are thankful for the blessing so integrity is the virtue of a loving mother. So truly I want to thank God for all things, great and small. Thank God for my wife of 53 years. Thank God for the mother that she is to our children. <clears throat> Amen. She has been 
when we got married and first child came and she was working one of them important jobs, essential. And I told her, home is your primary. That job out there is your secondary. When you get so that you can't take care of the primary, you're coming off of the secondary. In church, I never had to pull off that secondary job. 30, 33 years, 33 years, never missed a day at work. Thirty-three years. If she got sick, it was on her day off. Isn't that something? And just as soon as it was time for her to go back to work, that sister would perk right up and back out the door, she'd go again. That's unheard of. But she did it. And when she came home from work, within 45 minutes, we were sitting at the table eating. Three course meal, easy. On Sunday, four or five, dessert, amen. Thank God. She knew how to do it. And through the years, she exemplified what a mother really is. And I thank God for my mother who taught us corrected us, chasing us, had a switch tree out the back. You step out of line, go get them. Don't bring me no small one either. And that's, that switch has had leaves on them. You take, strip them off and they had left these little knots where the leaves were. And yes, indeed, they smoke you. Amen, isn't that something? Smoke you. But mom was very dedicated to several things. She sewed. She taught the junior choir song every Thursday night. Every Thursday night, we learned a new song. And she found time to cook, bake, do it all. No matter what time dad came home from out of the field late at night, she had dinner on the table, or it was prepared for him. All he had to do was walk in and eat and settle down, go to bed and get up and milk the cows in the morning, and 5.30 or so, gone. She kept us all intact. She guided the house. Amen. She kept us all in line, kept us all in line. She played ball with us. But when it was time to get serious, you step out of line, she would smoke you. Yes, indeed. Don't bring me no one switch. I want about three or four of them. And those things would sting. Yes, indeed. And she didn't believe in whipping pants. Strip down. Strip down. Yes, indeed. She wanted you to remember. And she would always tell you the reason why. We never got a whipping for doing nothing. We got it for being out of place, amen. But thank God for my mother. Mothers give good advice. <clears throat> and when I was 19 years old, she said it's time for you to settle down. 
and find you a wife. 19 years old. Amen. And I found one on the doorsteps of the church in Washington, D.C. And amen. The rest is history. Isn't that wonderful? So mom do give good advice. And I thank God for when she saw my very first bus, she was pleased. She was pleased to see that I had stepped out and accomplished something that I said I was going to do long before I even remember it. And my father told me that you said you were going to get you a bus. And amen. With the wisdom and the knowledge of the Almighty God, it came to be. So truly, we thank God indeed for all things. Church, today, on Mother's Day, for a thought one virtuous mother indeed amen one virtuous mother indeed when you put the one there You're speaking of a noteworthy example. One virtuous. A noteworthy example of who is and what is. Virtuous is defined as having or showing high moral standards. A virtuous, one virtuous mother. Mother is defined as the female parent that has given birth to a human being. Female. Amen. There's a picture of an individual, man to be exact, laying up in the bed like he done gave birth to a child. And I guess he's the mother in the relationship of gayism. But mother is a female parent. Not a want to be, but a female parent. And this is what is defined in the dictionary. It didn't say an iffy or one pretending to be or wanting to be. But it's a female, not a male acting like a female. Like he done gave birth to a baby, laying up in and they bringing him the baby, and he laying, he ain't got nothing up there to feed the baby with. Foolishness. A female parent that has given birth to a human being. Mother is also a woman who will bring up a child with care and affection. You know, it's to tickle me. When my wife had to strap the boys, it looked like it hurt her more than it hurt them. Oh, she would get them 
But it looked like to me when she was getting them, it was hurting her to get them. Nourishing and cherishing. That's mother. Listen to this. A woman in relationship to her children or her child. You cannot break that cycle. It is ordained by God. Amen. Mother. And then the word indeed. God bless you, Sister Robinette. Good to see you. Another mother walking in the house. The word indeed is defined as used, it is used to introduce a further and stronger or more, watch this, surprising note. Not only is she a mother, but she is a mother indeed. Amen. A stronger point. There's mothers, and then there are mothers indeed to the highest level. So listen, in the book of Proverbs, 31st chapter, then Keith is out on the road, so we Leaning on this young man over here. Amen. <clears throat> and Solomon, the wise king. You know, he had a situation when he was first anointed as king. Two women came to him. One was claiming that the child belonged to her, and the other one said, no, it's my child. And Solomon had to judge between the two. So he said, bring me a sword. You say it's yours, and you say it's yours, bring me a sword. I'm going to divide this child in two pieces so that you can have part and the other one can have part. One woman said, yeah, cut it up. And the other said, no, no, no. The Lord said, let her have the child. Solomon said, give her the child, for she is the mother. That's a mother indeed. Regardless of what, what she was about to lose her son, she wanted it to live instead of dying. And the other said, no, go ahead and cut it in two. And Solomon's wisdom went out throughout the land, all because of that incident. So in the 31st chapter of Proverbs, he asked a question here in the 10th verse. Read. Who can find a virtuous woman? Who, the question is asked, can find a virtuous woman, one that is showing high moral standards, 
when it comes to cooking, cleaning, caring for, who's showing the high quality? Amen. Read. For her price is far above rubies. For her price is far above rubies. Watch this 11 verse says, the heart of her husband does what? Safely trust him. Safely. Safely. He doesn't mind her having the checkbook. Uh-oh. He doesn't mind her driving his Tesla. Because he, what? Read that again, brother. Safely trust in her. He safely trusts in her. She's not going to damage it. She's not going to bring it back here all run out of juice. Ties all scarred up. But he safely. How we doing, church? Amen. Hmm? How we doing, church? Watch this now. So that he should have, shall have no need of spoil. Can you, sister, be trusted? Can your husband safely trust you? That he can give you the checkbook and you won't try to spin it all up in one day? Oh, he gave me this. Oh, okay, okay. I'm going to do it till there ain't nothing left in it. Does he safely? He knows he will have no need of spoil. Are you trustworthy? Good question. Twelve verse says what? She she will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. Isn't that something? She's gonna do him good. And we're talking about one virtuous mother. Indeed, indeed. Amen. Virtuous. She shall read her twelve verse again. She shall she will do him what? Good and good not evil. what? Not and evil. not evil what? All the days of her life. Amen. He won't have to worry about some other guy. Huh? She won't have to worry about some other guy. In today's society, some other woman. Oh, they flip today. Amen. You don't have to worry about that. Some, some have fallen into that, church. They got a wife, and the next thing they know, they don't have a wife. Some other woman got the wife. Thank God. I ain't had to worry about that. Amen. Amen. Ain't never have to worry about another dude. And she ain't never had to worry about another woman. Ain't gave her no reason. You see, because a mother indeed, church, realizes that she has children who are watching, listening, 
and they will carry out what they learn from you. Mother, indeed. So listen, in the book of Titus, the Apostle Paul was the was sent to the Gentiles. See, Peter and the others were of the Jews, but Paul was the minister, the apostle of the Gentiles. So there's Jews and Gentiles. And so he was giving Titus some specifics here. In the second chapter of the book of Titus, And he told Titus in the first verse these words. Listen. But what? But speak thou these things, Read. but speak thou the things which become sound doctrine. Doctrine. Speak thou the things which become what? Sound. Sound, sound doctrine. Don't be off the handle, blubbling off this and that and the other thing, but speak sound doctrine. Why? Read. That the aged men be sober. That the what? That the aged men. That the aged men be what? Sober. Sober. Grave. You see, if you got watered down doctrine, you're all over the place. You don't know what's right. You don't know what's wrong. You're speculating. But you speak sound doctrine. That the aged men be sober. Watch this now. Grave. What else? Temperate. Temperate. Sound in faith. Sound in what? In faith. You can't move. Someone that is sound. See, a lot of people are flipping and flopping today. Amen. They're flipping and flopping. Just like Brother Brain back there, he'd been knowing me for since he was a youngster. And he'll tell you, ain't nothing changed about this man. In all the years you've known me, Brother Brain, you ever seen any change here? Ain't no change. The same doctrine that I taught him when he was 17 years old, acting the fool, is the same doctrine that we speak of today. No change. So Paul is teaching Titus that you speak sound doctrine. That the age men it says, the aged men be sober, grave, tempered, sound in faith, in charity, and also in patience. You see, everything comes together by the power of God. Husbands and wives working together in the spirit of unity and love one toward the other. If the man should have no Hurt or harm, don't you as a man give the wife hurt or harm. Cause her to speculate, I'm wondering about my husband. Why is he putting all this on? Why is he always doing this or doing that? And I don't know what's going on. The wife don't need to have those situations. She's the mother. She got the house, children. And then she got to deal with you. Paul says, I need for you to be sound in faith, sound in charity, in patience. The third verse says, the aged women who? Likewise. Likewise, read. That they be in behavior. That they be in behavior. See, that's the virtue. When you're speaking about virtue, you're speaking about the principles and the teachings and the doctrine. 
What's morally correct? That the age women likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh what? Holiness. Holiness. And I ain't talking about rolling in the floor. You got a wholeness out there that rolls in the floor. Get knocked out. Now the Holy Ghost don't knock you out. The Holy Ghost stands you up. Walk right, talk right, be right, live right. They call them holy rollies. Amen. Rolling around on the floor, somebody got to throw a sheet over you to cover you up to keep from showing your underground. Because you just got slain in the spirit. Sound, sound. We're talking about one virtuous mother indeed. Listen, read. Not false accusers. What? Not false accusers. Not false accusers. You see your husband slipping, the elder says. Use your head, not your mouth. You see your husband slipping? Use your head. Don't use your mouth. One son of mine decided he didn't want to be married no more. His wife used her head. She said, look at what you have and look at what you're going to lose. She reasoned with him. He was laid up in the hospital. I went there to see him. I said, what's your problem? I don't want to be married no more. I said, you better get your act together. Still married today. Because there's one thing about me when I looked at you, I look at you right dead in the eye when I'm giving you certain instructions. And I don't mean for you to be looking off to the side somewhere else. I'm looking you right dead in the eye and I look him dead and I say, You better get your act together. And she, being a wise woman, used her head. She didn't use her tongue. She didn't threaten him. That's all right. I'm going to take you for everything you got. You go ahead on fool around out there. I'm going to make sure that you are skinny dipping when I finish with you. Friend of mine, he out there running around with a woman. He came home. Couldn't even get in the house. And when he got in the house, there was one plate, one knife, one fork, one spoon, one chair, one cup. Everything else was gone. One sheet, one pillowcase, one blanket, one bed, everything else gone. But a virtuous mother, indeed, will use her head. So let, let's, let's talk about this. You don't want to be, tell me why, and let's discuss this. And he, she showed him what he was to lose. What you got? There's a woman want to tell me one time, what you need is a good wife, a, a good woman. No, she said, what you need is a good woman. I said, wait, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're going to try to tell me that you're better than who I got at home, whom I know, and I don't know you? And you want me to take you and put over top of my wife, whom I know? You're out of your mind. And I, I blasted her right in front of the whole kitchen staff. She hit that door because she was a waitress and I was a cook. She hit that door. See, it was during the 10 days of fasting and prayer, and it wasn't a time for no jumping around, laughing and giggling and going. It's a solemn time. And I thank God for the wife in which she is. 
She never gave me a reason to think otherwise. She loved her boys. Oh, when it came time for dinner time, the boys would eat, and Dad put a little bit on my plate. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait. A minute. You better put some food on my plate. I said, because these boys are going to grow up and leave you one day, and you're going to be left with me. So put some food on my plate. Oh, yeah, she's going to make sure them boys eat. Oh, yeah, she's going to make sure them boys eat. Even today, still today, still today, you see stuff, she know they like, she done taken them and tucked it over here somewhere. Especially when she know they coming by. She done tuck, tuck. I look up in there and see it. I go in there and get it and I eat it. What happened to that dad? What you think? Amen. But that's that mother. That's that mother. Amen. Daddy comes second. When it comes to them children, church. But listen, he said, the aged women likewise, and they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not what? False accusers. Not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of what? Good things. Good things, because you want your children to know the best of everything. That's the mother indeed. She's going to train up the children in the way that they should go, not the way that they want to go, but the way that they should go. And she does that through a living example. How are we doing, church? That they may teach what? That they may teach the young woman to be sober. Sober. What? To love their husbands. To love, to, to, to love their husbands. Isn't that something? To love their husbands so that he won't have no need of any spoil whatsoever. And not only their husbands, but what? To also love their children. Amen. You got some of them out there that love the husband and don't want the children. Some husbands love the children and don't want the wife. Well, how'd you get the children? You sure didn't get them from somebody else and you didn't get them by yourself, so how'd you get them? Amen. Somebody had to bring them into the world. Yeah. And you can't tell me they ain't yours because they look just like you. Yeah. That they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their wives. Fifth verse says to be what? Discreet. Be discreet. Teach the younger women to be discreet. Women today don't want to wear stockings. They don't want to wear girdles. They don't want to wear bras. They don't want, they, they don't want to wear clothes, period. And I tell people oftentimes, anytime a woman wants to be a lady, she'll put on a dress. Any other time, she'll wear a pair of pants. How we doing, church? Tight ain't. That's right. It's the book, Deuteronomy 22 and 5. A woman should not wear that which pertaineth unto a man, for all that do so is an abomination. That's the book. Amen. You don't believe it? Google it. Watch this now. Obedient to their own husbands that the word of God be not what? Be not blasphemed. You see, when you're disobedient to your husband, you're speaking against the word of God. And that's dangerous. To speak against God's word. That's one thing about my wife. You know, we get into disagreement and I say, okay, let's see what the book says. We break out the book, and whatever the book says, she would always humble herself. That's the book. Never argue with the book. Oh, no. Oh, she argued with me at times. Oh, yeah, well, I think so. Well, I, I'm sorry, but, but yeah, I said, let's go see what the book said. 
Every situation that come up, church, it can be solved from the book. It is the perfect law of liberty. All you got to do is dust it off and open it up. It's all in there. To be discreet, chase, chase, learn how to dress yourself up. Don't run around with the same old, same old all the time. Learn how to dress yourself up. You got a job? Spend your money. Buy some clothes. Look like something, sister. Don't be running around here looking like a rag lady. Fix yourself up. Make your husband want to look at you. Shoes all run down. Feet all halfway on the ground. Come on now. You're right. Fix yourself up. Go to the beauty parlor. Get your hair done. Amen. If you want to, get it done every week if you want to. Amen. And if you ain't got the money, you just it, tell, hold, it, hold your hand out to your husband. Honey, I like to get my hair done. And if he loves you, he'll say, sure, sweetheart. And how much you want? And then, then let me give you a little something extra in case you want to spend a little extra. No man, no man, no man wants to see his wife looking like a bum. She's the mother of your children. Dress her up. Fix her up. Amen. I wasn't shopping for mine yesterday. I ain't tell nobody yet, though. No, I ain't told you about it yet, but it's still hanging there. Three dresses, all over a hundred and some bucks. She's worth it. She's worth it. Uh, she's worth it. Every bit of it. She's the mother of our children. To be discreet. Chase. Watch this now. What? Keepers at home. Keepers Good. at home. Housekeeper. 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 Don't go around there and clean the house once a month, twice a year. Clean up. Clean up. The aged women are supposed to teach the younger women how to be mothers. How we doing, mothers? It says, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not what? Blasphemy. First Timothy, stepping along here. <clears throat> Second chapter. Apostle Paul said this in the eighth verse of the second chapter, first Timothy. He says what? I will therefore that men pray everywhere. Lifting up holy hands without wrath or, and doubting. And doubting. You don't doubt. In like manner also that women do what? Adorn their, themselves in modest appearance. Modest. Modest apparel. Amen. <clears throat> you know, <clears throat> sometimes they want to dress up and they want to put all these tight dresses on. Then they want the V cuts. They want to be showing. You're right, flesh. That's not modest. See them all drop down, booze popping all out. That's not modest. Watch this now. What else? With shamefacedness? Ain't, ain't no shame. Ain't no shame today. No, it ain't no shame. Anytime a woman dressed to that degree, there's no shame. Nothing about it at all. Shameface. 
Read. And sobriety. Sobriety, meaning L, having some self-control. Amen. Have some self-control. If you know you got some flap, put a girl on so you won't be flopping. And you know what you're doing when you're doing it. The way you walk, you know what you're doing. Trying to excite somebody. What you got belongs to your husband. Amen. Modest apparel, with shame for and sobriety, not with what? Broided, Broided hair. hair. Say that again. Broided hair. Broided is the same thing as platinum. That's broaded. That's platinum. Google it. Amen. God gave you a hair for a covering. Take care of it. Beautify it. Dress it up. Go to the beauty parlor. You ain't got the money? Tell your husband. Can I have your checkbook? Thank you. Or give me your credit card. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> There's something about getting your hair done. Women feel a whole lot better when they get their hair done. Huh? So as a husband, you should want her to feel better. Want her to be elated. Want her to be happy. Amen. And a hair done tend to perk them up a little bit. Or oh, they feel good about themselves. My daughter, she comes home when she has hair, she got to sling hers around and bring it, and dad got to run my hand through it. Yeah, you like it? Yeah, I like it. you love it? Yeah, I love it. Then I got to smell it. Mmm, that smells good. That just puts the biggest smile on her face. And then when mom and got hers, she tell me mom got hers too. I said, oh, really? OK, come over here and let me look at yours. But these plaits shouldn't be in the woman. They're for little children, little girls growing up, you know? Then it speaks about gold or pearl or costly array. Oh, man, they got all kinds of jewelry. It's not necessary. 10th verse says what? But which becometh woman profess. But he, he, he wants you to adorn yourselves according to godliness. Read. With what? With good works. With good works. Read. Let the woman learn in silence. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection, but I suffer not, Paul says, a woman to teach, nor what? Nor to... Usurp. Usurp. Authority. Authority. Over the, over the man. So as a mother indeed, stay in your place. A woman ain't got no business in this pulpit. I'll say that again. A woman has no business being in this pulpit. Because when you get here, you are in touch with God and over all others. And Paul said, I suffer not a woman to teach nor to use up authority over the man. That's why I've said a woman cannot be the president of the United States of America. I've said it before and I've said it again. The reason being is America is the greatest nation on earth and the man that is sitting in the seat of the presidency is over all of the earth. 
And God's word cannot be broken. He said, I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to use up authority over the man, but to be what? In silence. In silence. Stay in your lane. And the only way that a woman can be the president of the United States of America is that the United States have lost its favor in God's sight. That's the only reason. But as long as it is honoring God, respecting God, and flying the flag, and got the motto, in God we trust, a woman can never be the president of these United States of America. And I know some folks upset, they don't want to hear that. You need to stop telling a woman that she can be anything she wants to be. No, you can't. You can't be a man. And there's some out there that think they're a man. Mm. Tight, ain't it? Judge ye what I say. Watch this, read. For Adam was first formed. For what? For Adam was first formed. Mm. You hear that? For Adam was first formed, then who? Eve. So now you're going to turn it around and put Eve in front of Adam? No, it ain't going to work. Stay in your lane. God's got a place for all of us. Stay in your lane. Read. And Adam was not deceived. Anna was not deceived. You see, the woman being the weaker of the two. Well, well, I'm just as strong as a man is. Oh, really? Really? How did that man jump in your sport and beat you at your game and you were the top of your game? See, now, all this stuff is sort of like brought about to correct the error, saying that you can be anything you want to be. No, 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 you can't be anything you want to be. You can only be what God will have you to be, nothing else. And you find that this transgender movement has brought to light that the woman is not as strong as the man and the man ain't got no business being in the woman's sports. Stay in your lane. Here you are nobody on your side. You come over to the woman's side and you beating everybody. Oh, no, 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 no. See how mixed up that is? So listen, and Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Satan knew exactly who to attack. He didn't go at Adam. Why? Because Adam is the stronger of the two. What did he do? Went to Eve. And when he laid out all them benefits in front of her, she took it. And what did Adam do? Adam, because he didn't want to lose this wife that he had been created from him, he partook of the forbidden tree. And they both died together. In the day that you eat thereof, thou shalt surely die. And that's when death came on all of us. Listen, read. Notwithstanding, she shall, Notwithstanding, be, she shall be saved in what? Childbearing. If what? If they continue in you faith. You got to continue in faith, and charity, and, and holiness, holiness with sobriety. One virtuous mother indeed. So listen, let's see if we can finish up here. Look at St. Mark, 13th chapter. <clears throat> Jesus was using a parable here. He was telling them about the coming of the, the end of the world.
In the 32nd verse, he said, But of that day and that hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels, but which are in heaven, neither the Son of Man, but who? But the Father. Then he says, Take ye heed, watch and pray, for you know not when the time is. Mothers, stay in tune with who you are. For you don't know when the day is going to come when time will no longer be. For the Son of Man is as a man taking a far journey who left his house, gave authority to his servants, and to every man his work, and commanded all to do what? Com and commanded the porter to watch. Watch. Read. Watch ye therefore. Watch ye therefore. Read. For you know not when the master of the house cometh. When? At even. Read. Or at midnight. Midnight. Or at the cock crowing. Or, or in the morning. In the you morning. don't know when he's coming. So stay in your lane. Amen. Read. Let's come in suddenly. What? He find you sleeping. Read. And what I say. Unto you all. What I say unto you, I say unto who? All. Watch. Watch. Let's finish up back over in Proverbs. Thirty one. Thirty second verse. Twenty. <clears throat> What verse? 25. 25th. 31, 31st chapter, 25th verse. Strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. She openeth her mouth with what? Wisdom. And in her tongue is what? The law of kindness. She looketh well to the ways of a household and eateth not the bread of what? Idleness. Running all over here on the telephone. Yeah, 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 yeah. And can't get the work done in the house because you're on the telephone. Yeah, 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 yeah. Idleness. Read. Her children arise up. The children rise up, read. And call her blessed. And call her blessed. Read. Her husband also. Her husband also, and what? And he praises her. And he praises her. Come home and find everything the way it's supposed to be. The children are pleased, husband pleased, and you can't help but be pleased when you look around and see what you done accomplished. Brother said the wife came home from working all night long and she fired off a bruffers that was out of this world to the degree that he had to give her some flowers. She didn't think about it. She done worked all night long. I get home, how come he ain't got nothing fixed for me? Now she got in the kitchen and got it all done. And they dined sufficiently. Got him all up in the air. That's my wife. Look at what I'm going to tell you what my wife did. Amen. So now if you got them flowers, don't lay down on the job. Keep it up. Virtuous. One virtuous mother indeed. Read, brother. Let's finish up here. Many daughters have done virtuously. Many daughters have done virtuously, but what? But thou excellest. But thou excellest what? Them all. Them all. Read. Favor is deceitful. Favor is deceitful. Beauty is vain. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she what? Shall, Shall be praised. be praised. 31st verse says, give her of the fruit of her hands. And what? And let her own works praise her in the gates. Whew. Let her own works. Not somebody else's work. Let her own works praise her in the gates. You believe you heard the truth today? 
The Lord said, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall what? Make you free. Free from what? Whatever's holding you captive against your will. May God bless you, church. Have whatever smile upon us. One virtuous mother in deed. Mother in deed. Amen. <clears throat> For your program, it says integrity in the, is the virtue of a what? Loving mother. Amen. Thank God for these mothers. You all keep on pressing on, holding on. Look up, but don't give up. <clears throat> Let us continue to press on and hold on. Amen. Turn the service over to Brother BJ there. Thank you. All right. Amen. We thank God for the sermon. We thank God for a loving mother. And we thank God for this Mother's Day. And we thank God for the woman who wanted her son to live instead of having her son. And, All right. and that shows that mothers are truly loving. And